thank you for joining us. This session is to discuss the online and part-time graduate programs in financial mathematics offered through the Whiting School of Engineering at Johns Hopkins University. My name is Cheryl Williams, and I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Marketing for the Whiting School. To give us more information on financial mathematics, I have with me our chair, Dr. David Audley. So somewhat, um, so there's a, a few things that we'd like to talk about uh, with regards to the financial math program. And I presume that everybody is familiar with what financial mathematics is. It's, it's finance, but it, uh, there's no um, uh, shying away from the full mathematical underpinning and rigor associated with modern finance as it's practiced at the highest levels in the industry today. Uh, at Johns Hopkins, we uh, the financial mathematics program is an applied professional engineering-based um, program within the Whiting School. And we offer a Master of Science degree in financial mathematics. And as well, we also offer some graduate certificates. And currently there are three graduate certificate options uh, one in financial risk management, that's, uh, that's quite an expanding field. Uh, we find that uh, there's a lot of interest uh, in that. Uh, the focus there is, of course, on financial risk and equally weighted towards measuring and quantifying financial risk as it is demanded by the uh, regulators, the Federal Reserve and so forth that oversee our banks and other financial institutions. Uh, there's also a certificate in quantitative portfolio management. Um, this is primarily directed towards uh, the asset management uh, side of the industry. As you probably know, um, beyond just the standalone asset management firms, uh, such as uh, BlackRock or uh, Pacific Investment, PIMCO, um, Asset management exists in virtually every bank uh, and in every insurance company. There's usually a large um, division associated with managing the assets to offset the uh, liabilities of depositors and, and other aspects of the business. And then finally, we have kind of a specialized area uh, called securitization. Uh, this is the domain of uh, mortgage-backed securities, um, probably the biggest debt market uh, in the world, um, which is mainly made up of uh, the residential and um, mortgages uh, of originated in the U.S. to finance uh, home purchases. And obviously, home, home building and home ownership is a, a national priority. It's a, it's a driver of our economy. And for, um, for most people uh, today even, uh, there is the aspiration to own one's home at some point, uh, whether it's a standalone single family dwelling or as a condominium or whatever. So um, the master's degree is a degree that requires the completion of 10 courses. Uh, the 10 courses uh, must be completed in a five-year period. And the way we structure the offering of the courses, uh, it's, it's eminently possible to finish that degree in two or three years, uh, taking, let's say, two courses a semester, three semesters a year. Uh, I mean, you can do the combinatorics. Maybe you don't take courses during the summer. Maybe you only take one course during the summer two courses in the fall or the spring, or as a number of our students, they just take one course at a time. Uh, you know, most of our students have jobs, they have families, and they have other priorities along with their, um, you know, priority to advance their education. So I'd like to, I always like to point this out, that uh, the courses that make up our online program in financial math are in every way that I can make possible the same course that we offer on campus in the full-time programs. Uh, in fact, 
as you take some of the uh, courses in financial math, you'll see uh, segments of the uh, online video pre presentation as being um, captured during lecture uh, on campus, where you get the benefit of some of the questions that students ask and some of the uh, ad hoc bent, or I'll call it, that goes on with regards to uh, issues that naturally uh, interest students. Um, so in that sense, uh, you should know that this, this, is, this is the full, uh, full deal. Uh, we occasionally have students who are full-time on-campus enrollees in various courses take the online course because otherwise uh, it, it's uh, impossible for them to fit it into their curriculum, either because of conflicts with other courses they're taking or because of the, uh, the regular offering cycle on campus. So it's fully recognized in uh, both directions and it's just as rigorous in both directions. I would say that the online courses maybe have a slight advantage over the on-campus offerings because there is quite a lively uh, discussion forum that uh, is associated with the online program and students participate, I participate, and um, it's, it's, uh, it benefits tremendously from the, uh, the next bullet, which I'll address the second one first, in that many of your classmates are already in the industry. They work at insurance companies or at asset managers or at banks or at Wall Street firms, and they're looking to uh, broaden or get a deeper insight into the quantitative elements that uh, are part of the industry. The other thing is that our faculty uh, is uh, pretty deep with applied expertise uh, before starting the uh, on-campus program uh, at Johns Hopkins in 2006, 2007. I myself was on Wall Street for 20 years at various investment banks and on the buy side at asset management firms and at a couple of hedge funds along the way. And our other faculty um, have that same kind of uh, experience, uh, which adds a lot of insight uh, to their expertise in the context of lectures and the various uh, interactive um, sessions that we have. So um, even though it says here online and virtual live, in the financial math uh, department, I guess I can call it that, all of our courses are online. Uh, there are some courses uh, more of a mathematical nature like the Monte Carlo course and the statistical methods course where you may have the option to either do it online or in a virtual live setting. And the virtual live setting just allows you to kind of sit in on the uh, offering uh, wherever it's uh, being given. So those are a couple of the alternatives. So we can go to the next slide, Cheryl. So in the, uh, in the master's degree um, curriculum, uh, 10 courses, as I said, completed in five years, there are nine core courses and one elective, and we'll go through those in a minute. Uh, for the certificates, which must be completed in three years, there's a requirement of five courses. So some people like to get started in the certificate because they don't necessarily know if they're going to, um, you know, want to persist through the 10 core sequence. And at least after five courses, they come out with a uh, uh, with with a completion document and. Uh, the courses that we require for the certificates are a subset of the courses we require for the degree. So you then have the option of going on and completing the master's degree, but you have along the way a specialization certificate in one of the three areas we talked about. Next slide. So these are, these are the core courses in the financial mathematics program. Um, there is a uh, kind of an introductory math course, uh, which is which two are offered. They're very similar. 
Now they use the same textbook uh, and they cover in a very broad sense a lot of the um, elementary mathematical ideas, whether they're in um, asset management or uh, in uh, you know, interest rates, um, uh, aspects of um, statistics and other things that are used quite broadly. Uh, here's where you would find some introduction to some of the financial economics ideas such as the capital asset pricing model and, uh, and arbitrage pricing as it exists uh, and has been created by in the financial economics community. The next two courses uh, are offered as a sequence. Uh, the f introduction to financial derivatives and the interest rate and credit derivatives. Um, the, the introductory course is a prerequisite for the interest rate and credit, credit derivatives. The introductory course is typically required for all of the certificates, uh, although the interest rate and credit derivative course is not. Um, this, these, these two courses are offered in successive semesters. Uh, typically every semester, every fall, we offer introduction to financial de derivatives and every spring, we offer interest rate and credit derivatives. Uh, then on the flip side, uh, we offer interest rate and credit derivatives every fall and during the summer, we offer introduction of financial derivatives. So it gives people an opportunity to start the program at different times during the year and pick up both those courses. Um, the next course is the specialty course in uh, financial risk, uh, financial risk measurement. It's a, it's a fairly quantitative course. I would recommend taking the introduction of financial derivatives first before taking that course. Uh, it just makes things a little bit easier when we talk about hedge instruments like futures contracts and how the various uh, risk weightings are assigned to on balance sheet, off balance sheet derivatives and so forth. So uh, that's something you might want to keep in mind. Although very often I have students take uh, the introduction of financial derivatives and the risk management course concurrently and they do fine. Uh, the next few courses are uh, essentially mathematical courses with a, um, a bent towards uh, uh, finance. Uh, the statistical methods and data analysis course, that is uh, you know, a pretty involved or in-depth course in various statistical methods, methods hypothesis testing, um, uh, you know, the, the techniques for analyzing statistical time series uh, and so forth. Um, there's an optimization course uh, in finance. Uh, these are all the, the linear and nonlinear optimization techniques that um, are used in finance for some of them for um, uh, portfolio optimization and, uh, and also in structuring uh, asset liability um, uh, partnerships of, uh, you know, that often are found in the insurance and um, uh, defined benefit uh, industry portfolio uh, retirement plans. Uh, the Monte Carlo methods course is, there are two areas where that's, um, Monte Carlo methods are heavily used. One is in analyzing uh, path dependent options uh, such as are found embedded in mortgage-backed securities. Uh, we also use Monte Carlo methods in a lot of the uh, risk management techniques that are currently used in banks today. Um, time series analysis and dynamic modeling is another, is kind of a follow-on to the statistical methods course. Again, now this is more focused on uh, time series of financial uh, quantities. And then this, this last course, the Introduction of Stochastic Differential Equations with Applications, is a course that can pretty much be taken any time. Uh, it is heavily dependent on calculus-based probability, so we uh, strongly um, recommend that uh, students uh, have that as a requirement for uh, entering the program. Um, the stochastic differential equations, stochastic process course, 
students find is one of the more challenging courses in the curriculum. Uh, again, it, uh, it covers a lot of the mathematical techniques that are used in uh, analyzing interest rate derivatives. Um, and while it's not necessarily necessary to take this course before interest rate derivatives, if you take the interest rate derivatives course first, it gives you a context and an introduction to a lot of these stochastic process ideas such that when you go into the more in-depth mathematical course, you kind of have a good uh, perspective uh, for that. Then there's a, a choice of a couple of electives depending on uh, where you're coming from or where you uh, plan to go. Uh, one in uh, portfolio theory or for more directed towards the asset management side of the business and the other for the specialization in uh, securitization. Um, and here, when we talk about securitization, even though the biggest uh, industry is, um, as it relates to mortgage-backed securities, um, you know, the, the CLO market and the structured loans uh, certainly is, uh, you know, is a product that is growing in popularity within the asset management space. Okay, so um, for the certificates in risk management, you can see that a lot of the courses here are the um, same ones that were in the a master's program. Uh, you can see the introduction to derivatives, the investment science, the statistical methods, the Monte Carlo methods, which are used in um, a lot of the uh, development of value at risk or expected shortfall or those kinds of measures that are used uh, in the risk uh, industry portfolio. So this is more directed towards the asset management industry. You can see there are still similarity in courses here, the investment science and financial derivatives. Um, in the financial derivatives course, you'll see that everywhere. Um, you might say, well, you know, do we use derivatives everywhere? This course goes into a lot of the uh, underpinnings of, um, uh, of, of the fixed income and equity market space the notions of how securities settle, um, the idea of accruing benefits, whether it's in accruing interest in a bond or how you accrue um, a rights in, uh, in an equity offering. Um, this being the asset management, the quantitative portfolio theory is a big part of this. And along with that, the optimization is typically a uh, uh, an aspect that uh, a lot of people in asset management are uh, keen to gain insights to. Next. And this is the, uh, this is the last one. Um, and again, this is the securitization uh, used a lot in mortgage-backed securities, uh, structured loans, uh, CLO markets. Um, in, in the recent past, in uh, credit derivatives, there was a lot uh, associated with securitization. There's still many of those securities around, um, and and um, and definitely the the large insurance companies are big investors in various structured product using uh, for which mortgage-backed securities are, are are the collateral. And again, these are the the last three are typically the specialization courses in securitization. Okay. Cheryl, will you talk about application process? I would love to, sure. Okay. So on this first slide, we just want to kind of review the overall process with you. Uh, when we talk about submitting an application, it actually has three parts to it. Um, the first part is uh, an online application that you can access through this URL here, ep.jhu.edu backslash apply. Uh, we do not charge an application fee. So just to give you a heads up when you submit your application, there's no application fee. Um, in addition to that, that, you'll need to submit your transcripts, your academic transcripts for uh, all of your previous institutions. And we also want to see a professional resume. Um, instructions on where to submit those, these particular documents can be found um, at this URL. It's, it's actually listed in the text above the application form. 
We offer rolling admissions for our online and part-time programs. It typically takes uh, the academic department and admissions a total of four to six weeks on average to review a student's completed application packet. So with that in mind, we wanted to share some important dates with you. Um, spring registration actually opens on October the 25th, so uh, not too far away, and the spring semester begins on January the 28th. So if you are interested in studying with us in the spring semester, we encourage you to submit your materials as soon as possible so that we can review them and issue you a decision letter uh, in time for you to enroll in classes. David. Can I hand it back to you to uh, discuss your admissions requirements for this program? Yes, yes. So um, the admission requirements are uh, meant to provide um, a, a candidate with, with uh, confidence if he meets those admissions requirements that he's likely to be quite successful in the program. So we don't make up admission uh, requirements just to um, you know, to, for purposes of shock and awe. We, we do it because we think these are the kinds of things that successful candidates uh, might typically uh, exhibit in terms of their credentials. So I'll go through those and then I'm going to make a caveat at the end. Uh, <laughs> typically we require, I mean invariably we require a bachelor's degree and uh, we usually uh, spec specify that as in a quantitative di discipline. So uh, obviously quantitative disciplines such as mathematics, engineering, it can be physics, uh, and it can be other um, disciplines as well. Uh, some student, uh, student applications come in with a bachelor's degree in economics, uh, but as you look at it, you can see that they've elected to take a number of mathematics courses in statistics or probability. And so it makes sense that even though they don't have what would be traditionally thought of as a quantitative a bachelor's degree, they, 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 they measure up. Um, there, we have a requirement for a GPA of 3.0 or better. Um, we like for, since this is a professional education uh, degree and program, uh, applicants should have some uh, relevant full-time work experience, uh, two years, two plus years, seems to be uh, the right amount to, um, uh, to highlight, uh, although uh, we've taken students into the program with less than that. Uh, you know, they, they've graduated, they've been working a year at an insurance company, and they decide, gee, I, I think, you know, while I'm still single, or I remember all that stuff from my undergraduate program, I'd like to get started in a master's program. And that works fine for us. I mean, that doesn't, um, that doesn't, that doesn't weaken uh, their ability in any way to uh, be successful. So as it relates to quantitative and quantitative discipline in the bachelor's degree, we like for students to have, um, expertise in these areas, competency we call it, in calculus, linear algebra, differential equations, probability, statistics, and some computer programming. I would say if I was going to uh, prioritize this, uh, someone who has uh, competency or can demonstrate competency in calculus-based probability is very highly valued in terms of a candidate who will invariably do very well in our program. Uh, that's not to say that if their probability was taken in conjunction with statistics and maybe they didn't uh, integrate uh, density functions to get distributions, um, if they've had calculus, differential integral calculus, um, they're, probably, they're probably okay. Um, there are um, we do offer at Johns Hopkins um, what I'll call courses that can help you refresh your competency or establish your competency. Uh, I mean, we've had people apply to the program with 10 or 15 years in the industry. And of course, you know, that whatever they did in their bachelor's degree is, you know, way far in the rearview mirror. And so sometimes they say, well, you know, 
I think I know all of that stuff, but I'd like to have some way to, you know, demonstrate to myself and to you that uh, my competency is is current. So there are courses that that we do offer that you can take uh, that are remedial that don't apply to the degree, but which uh, uh, you know if you if you come up a little bit short in the um, in the, the requirements, um, you can. Um, is that mine? Uh, sure. Let's see. I may have. Okay. That you can. Um, some my screen just was taken over by another application. So oh, I, was run, okay. <laughs> I was running a program in the background and it completed, and then all of a sudden it came up on my screen. Oh Sorry. my gosh. Um, so, uh, you know, I would just say there are those options uh, open. Uh, sometimes people like to do that at maybe their local community college or through some other on online source. That's all good. Uh, as you'll notice, we don't require the GRE. Uh, so that can that sometimes uh, seen as uh, desirable for students, especially who have been out of school for a while and uh, are kind of overwhelmed at the prospect of having to uh, take a GRE exam. All right, quick review of next steps and then let's get to your questions. Uh, again, if you're interested in studying with us, first step is submit your application and then uh, to submit your transcripts and your professional resume. Important dates to keep in mind, spring registration opens on October the 25th and the spring term begins January 28th of 2019.